Hi, my name is uh, Steffen Neumann and Roy asked me to give a metabolomic snippet. So I'm going to talk about an article of ours that appeared four years ago in the Springer Metabolomics Journal, which is on data standards that can boost metabolomics research. So briefly, I'm coming from the Leibniz Institute of Plant Biochemistry in Halle, which is just one hour away from Berlin over here. The Institute has roughly 100 researchers um, and 50 years of experience uh, in metabolomics. And depending on how you count, 5 to 15 of these are bioinformaticians in different groups. My own group is regarding uh, computational plant biochemistry approaches and among that we are developing computational mass spectrometry and computational metabolomics approaches. So um, coming to data standards in metabolomics research. It all started out as part of the COSMOS project and uh, it was a team of about 20 authors of writing this review. And uh, I have to say it's one of the first reviews we were writing jointly using Google Docs so you could really see the uh, article organically growing over time. And uh, that particular time was uh, roughly four months that it took us to put it together. So the aim was to show uh, the metabolomic standards both for raw data and metadata information about the experiment and then uh, go into what software and libraries, software libraries support them and then uh, how you can benefit from that and which journals appreciate that. The reason is really that we believe in standards and it doesn't hurt to use them. And even though the term was not yet coined, this was all about fair data. So the data standards are required because metabolomics is really scaling up to massive amounts of samples. Uh, so we need workflows and the workflows need standardized formats to process them. So the first message that we have in the paper is to really use um, common software and libraries for the standards. Uh, because all the data standards, they uh, really require an ecosystem of readers, writers and validators. And uh, you can write all the standards on the planet if you want, but if there is no code using them, then uh, they are not being applied in the, uh, in the wild. Also, when it comes to uh, standards, try to avoid uh, having too many dialects. Uh, fix the uh, producers, the code uh, for the converters, and don't try to adopt all the readers to uh, deal with all the different dialects. So we could here see uh, some of the software on, uh, for example, um, MZML data reading, and then we had also uh, a table on the software that is uh, dealing with metadata information. The second message we have in there is research data management really should be uh, a standard operating procedure in the lab. So typically you would have people uh, designing the experiment, running the experiment, uh, looking at the data, writing up the paper, and then the journal is asking you to submit uh, the supplemental information. So you go back to the raw data, convert that, uh, you go to the lab book and try to uh, put together the experimental metadata to submit that to a repository. But really, data shouldn't be provided as an afterthought. Um, this should be built into the entire process of writing uh, and, and preparing uh, your experiment. And you should really be your own and first user because you have to prepare the data afterwards anyway. So um, the prime example in metabolomics is uh, the EBI metabolites repository for both MS and NMR. There is uh, more than a thousand studies uh, by now. And then it can give you some network analysis uh, for your data. It takes QC uh, and, and, and MS mass spectra as well and supports all the ontologies that we see in the bioontology world. And you can uh, deal with the uh, studies and some of them can be a private study so they are not visible to the outside, only to you or maybe people you give the link to. And uh, the good thing about the repositories is their findability of the data in there. You can have networks like the Metabolome Exchange over here, and then you can have data set crawlers like the Omics DI, also developed at the EBI, which can then find the individual studies based on their metadata provided. So this is one of these examples of being your first own users. Here we had Christian Peters. He was uh, given, doing a study on bryophytes, submitting that data right to the repository. Then he was using Galaxy, which was pulling the data right out of the repository for processing. 
and then uh, he wrote uh, a paper about the workflow that was applied and then uh, the paper with the actual biology in that. So with that I would like to say thanks to all the people who helped me and thanks for Roy for uh, inviting me to give that talk. And please enjoy the rest of the day.